effects of the attacks at 9-11. But we now are going to turn to one of your co-winners, uh, Wilbert Rideau. He was in prison for 44 years at the Angola, Louisiana State Penitentiary before he won his release in 2005. While in prison, he became editor of The Angolite, a newspaper produced by inmates. During his time at Angola, Rideau became an award-winning journalist. In 1979, he became the first prisoner ever to receive the American Bar Association's Silver Gavel Award for an investigative expose, Conversations with the Dead, that resulted in the release of a number of longtime prisoners lost in the Louisiana prison system. He also earned the George Polk Award for Special Interest Reporting in 1979 for his outstanding contributions to public understanding of the criminal justice and prison systems. Well, 31 years later, Wilbert Rideau is in New York to accept that award in person. He'll be honored today at the 62nd Annual George Polk Awards for Journalists. In March 1993, Life magazine called Wilbert Rideau the most rehabilitated prisoner in America. His autobiography, In the Place of Justice, A Story of Punishment and Deliverance, was published last year. We are thrilled to have Wilbert Rideau with us. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here to be on Democracy Now. Tell or us any, anywhere for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about the Angolite, what you're winning the George Polk Award for, this remarkable prison newspaper. How you did it in prison? Well, I didn't do it. It, it, it was it was something that happened that was unprecedented because prisons nationwide uh, operate under a veil of secrecy, uh, absolute censorship. It's the last feudal system in, in existence in America. And uh, for a 20-year period, they lifted censorship. A guy, a corrections director named C. Paul Phelps, he, a remarkable visionary, he thought that uh, censorship uh, was causing more problems than it was worth. And he lifted censorship and gave, in a handshake, we agreed, he gave me uh, freedom to uh, operate a free press, to publish, investigate any story that I could substantiate, photograph anything, and uh, travel throughout the state's penal system to pursue stories. And that's that's really why we won, ended up winning awards, because we had unique access to stories that normal journalists didn't have. And how did you get involved with the, the paper to begin with? And oh, that's a long story. But uh, the thing is, uh, I was uh, initially. Uh, I w this happens, and I. I well, <laughs> you are redefining the cell phone. <laughs> hey, I don't even know any much about it. <laughs> but uh, oh, feel free to pick it up. We'll wait. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> they need to learn uh, to just watch Democracy Now, and they'll know that you're on. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, they're not watching this show. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, that enabled me to do some of the stories that we did. And for the George Polk Award, it was uh, sexual violence. Back in 1979, prison authorities nationwide presented the way they portrayed sexual violence in prisons to uh, the public was that this was something that was done by homosexuals and uh, gay uh, guys. They did this, you know, uh, uh, on innocent heterosexuals because, you know, they're freaks or whatever. That's the way they presented it, you know, and they said they couldn't control that because, by nature, these guys are criminal and whatnot. And the sexual violence, what I did was essentially uh, uh, told what it really was. And it wasn't the homosexual. It weren't the gays. In fact, they were quite often victims. And it was the heterosexuals who were doing the raping and the violence and whatnot. And it was being done with the tacit approval of prison, prison authorities. I mean, they were doing it because you had massive slavery, and any time one segment of the prison population controls the other, you have a divided population, and you've made it quite easy for security to run the prison. And that what was going on, and uh, that let the cat out of the bag, and they incurred the wrath of their fellow prison administrators around the country. who. Let them know they didn't appreciate what that. What was the reaction of the guards within the penal system to the fact that the authorities above them were giving you the the uh, opportunity to travel back and forth and interview people and write these articles? Well, initially, there was a certain amount of resistance. Uh, in fact, uh, one time, the uh, 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 prison officials 
they all went to the warden's office and staged a little protest that uh, they didn't feel it was right to have uh, to require them to answer questions from a, a, a prisoner. You know, this is beyond. They, they, you know, this you could you shouldn't do that. And uh, but he stood his ground and said that you know. Uh, we were going to be a real press. We we're going to, you know, the Angleite was going to cover the community, both inmate and employees, just like the New York Times uh, covers New York. We only have a minute, but as you wrote your book, In Place of Justice, A Story of Punishment and Deliverance, what is your assessment of the prison system today? It's uh, would, uh, this not a prison system. It's an industrial complex. That's what it's become. It's no longer about—I uh, mean, the people believe it's crime and punishment. It's not. It's about power. It's about money. It's about politics. It's about prejudice. And uh, you—every society needs law and order in order to function. You can't do without it. But you don't need this monster that you've created. Uh, the monster—and the best, the most profound impact, the most profound reform will ever be made in prison will be to lift censorship. Once you do that, you'll see a dramatic change in things. What do you mean, love censorship? Well, you automatically create. Uh, right now, you only know what prison authorities let you know. Uh, you have to take their word for the fact that, oh, our prisoners are well, uh, the prisoners is being run well. That's like asking, asking a dictator, what, you know, what is your regime like? What is he going to tell you? Uh, but once you remove censorship, what you've done is you've empowered the prisoners and the employees uh, to, you know, all be more or less uh, participants in an oversight committee. In our prison, it was, what, 7,000 people, 5,000 prisoners, 2,000 uh, employees. And they could call anybody they wanted to, as long as somebody was willing to pay the charges. Every inmate could pick up the telephone, call, collect, to Democracy Now!, New York Times, or any other place, and say, hey, look. This guy's raping this guy next to me, or this guy is. Mm -hmm. That works. You'll be surprised how quickly they clean up the act. Well, Wilbert Rideau, we thank you very much for being with us. Congratulations to both you and Juan on the George Polk Award. Uh, thank Wilbert you, Rideau's Elizabeth. book is called In the Place of Justice A Story of Punishment and Deliverance.